Does it lend itself to a type of runner like Jim? Hell yes. <laughs> man, would I love, man, would I love to see him. Following the huge announcement recently of the brand new World Trail Majors race series, I took the FMR cameras up to St Albans in Hertfordshire to speak to James Elson, who is the founder of Centurion Running and whose flagship race, the South Downs Way 100, is one of nine races in that series. Welcome to Film My Run and if you're not already subscribed to the channel and you're excited to hear about the World Trail Major Series then do click the link down below and also the bell icon if you don't mind so you're notified every time we upload a new video. Now we'll get back to the juicy stuff in a minute but first I wanted to ask James a little bit about Centurion Running. So Centurion Running are, we are, um, principally an event organiser. We started in 2010. And in the last 12, 13 years, we've organized just over 100 ultra trail races in the UK. Um, I think that's what we're probably best known for. So we began with the North Downs Way 100 and that became 400 milers on trail, 450 miles on trail. And in more recent years, we've added the Track 100, where we saw world records going, which was just an incredible thing. And then a Trail 50K and just coming up, our first 200 mile race. So I think probably our, we're best known for that. Then we also have a coaching side to the business. So we've got nine top level um, ultra distance coaches and then the store where we're sitting now. And this sort of doubles as our event store, office and shop all in situ. Yes, yeah, so I've started calling myself founder because it was always RD. And of course, now we've got four RDs, soon to be five, probably. Hot take. Um, and really that's not an accurate representation of what I do now. I'm trying to, as you say, sort of steer the whole business. Um, I started Centurion in 2010 because I was going abroad to do the types of races that I wanted to do. So longer distance, 100 miles specifically, on trail, really awesome courses at great time of year for running, running races, and uh, marked, well supported. So I could show up somewhere no matter where I'd come from, by myself and have a great experience and get to know that community. And there wasn't much ultra distance activity in the UK towards the end of the 2000s. It was the quietest decade really we've probably ever had in the sport because it was bigger in the 80s, for example. So I came back and then we put the North Downs Way 100 together and things just went from there. We added things on, more races, the shot, coaching, everything, as the kind of boom started through kind of the mid 2010s um, to where we are today so fortuitous on the one hand that it was kind of just at the start of probably just before things started growing exponentially here um, but also partly driven here I think by us and by the races we've put on especially in the southeast you know there, there just wasn't anything else going on so um, I, I got into it and I'm still in it because I'm a runner I, I you know if you ask me first and foremost, what am I? I, say, I would say I'm a runner, not event RD or, you know, retail manager or any of that stuff. Um, that's lessened in recent years as we've got busier and my kids have grown up a bit and time is less available. But still, for me, getting out the door every day is what it's all about. So, so what exactly is this new series? What is the World Trail Majors? It's a series of nine global events that share a similar set of values and have come together because of those set of values. So principally that they're independent. We're each in charge of our own race. There's no you know, overseeing factor that we're responsible to. Authentic, uh, community driven. And some of these might sound like cliche throwaway terms, but they're really not. They are the things that underpin what we do. You know, we have 100 plus volunteers out at every 100 mile race. Without that, the sport literally doesn't exist. So that community isn't just, you know, something that we try and foster and is important for business. It literally allows the sport to take place. And these events all hold the community and the volunteer network at the very heart of what they do. So those things we put in. Always these events put in local businesses and local people first, enjoy really good relationships in their local areas and have a local trail running community. But the courses and the style of event lend themselves to bigger interests. So, you know, we've all got bucket list races and it's about bringing people from all over the world to 
one race plus their local event and that's the sustainable side of this we're not asking people to race nine events globally at a time like this um we're asking them to compete in their local race and then pick one other sort of bucket list race from the list annually to complete in the series or compete in the series so only two races will count so we, we share a set of values and it allows us as a group of races to move forward, to discuss, to grow, to learn from one another and work together and then provide the trail running community, both locally and internationally, this opportunity to be part of similar races with a similar ethos in these incredible environments. James talks a lot about the races in the series being community driven, authentic, with a real feel for the local area in which they're run. But some of the races in the series are huge international events. Madeira Island Ultra Trail, Trans Gran Canaria, they attract huge international elite fields. So how can these events be so community led when they exist on such a huge international scale? I think there's always a, a behind the veil thing with events and I see it a lot with Centurion. You know, people come into events and it, you see the website and you see the numbers and you see the scale and the number of events and you build a picture in your head of what this is. And I think a lot of people come into Centurion races or maybe view Centurion races from the outside without having been there as quite big commercial events. And the reality, as you know firsthand, is that you get there and you're looked after by individuals. You're looked after as a person. Um, and the events that are part of the series ultimately are the same as us. They have one person or a small group of people, in most cases, who are responsible for the direction of the organisation. So yes, of course, the staff team grows massively on race weekend for all of these. But they might have an RD for a specific distance within the overall race weekend. But they're one event sh with a shared sort of value that un underpins everything that they do. How much they've grown in their local environment is often a product of how long they've been going or how big the community is that they're appealing to. So with Trans Gran Canaria, the reach just within the Spanish trail running community is enormous, let alone the global athletes coming in. There's also a lot to do with elite athlete presence and then how much attention that then draws onto the event. So, you know, someone like Ara Viper with Black Canyon, Ara Viper and Centurion are probably the two that have got the most in common in terms of we organise a lot of other events aside from the one that's going to sit within World Trail Majors. But that event, Black Canyons, has grown substantially and and there's room for growth in some of the smaller races in the series of which South Downs Way 100 is obviously one in pure numbers terms it's a smaller event but we operate the same way and it's very clear since the outset that even though there are some very big international events there they're still essentially managed by one or two overseen by one or two people who have this core set of values and that hopefully comes across. Next I asked James about funding for the series is there going to be a headline sponsor? Will there be a headline sponsor? My feeling is yes. We're certainly open to that idea. Um, we potentially could look at, firstly, the sponsor needs to, or sponsors need to fall in line with the set of values that we are striving towards. So we won't be going out getting a sponsor, headline sponsor, because we're desperate for some cash to pump in to get this thing to happen. We're in the privileged position of saying we can make this work ourselves as organisers and that's fine. Would we, would we want to attract a headline sponsor that fits with the values of the series? Absolutely. And I'm hopeful that that will happen and obviously work has been going on for some time to develop relationships for that to kick off. The big thing with this is timing. So we've launched obviously two weeks ago. I forget, could be a week. <laughs> Time moves quickly. The, the series essentially starts Jan 1, 2024, and Hong Kong 100K is the first race. So would we like a headline sponsor on board before we kick off 2024? 20, yes, we would. Is that going to change anything for us, make or break? No, it's not. So I think you will see in time a headline sponsor. My feeling is it will be synonymous with the values of the organisation or the association, and um, we will then grow from there, whether there's second tier, third tier sponsors in time. It's a work in progress. But is there a risk that bringing in a headline sponsor across all of the events 
will give them a homogenized feel rather than that local community feel that they are striving for. So I think that kind of polices itself in that if you take any one individual event, there's already a raft of sponsors on board. We have serious sponsors for Centurion Running that are sponsors of the South Downs Way 100, Laspel Teva, Petzl, and Jinji, Ultimate Direction, Tailwind, Goo. And then you've got Hong Kong 100K and you've got Ultra Trail Cape Town that have got their own, all of these events have got their own raft of national sponsors. We cannot have something which directly clashes with the already wholly integrated fundamental local sponsors of each event so you can probably work out in your own minds where that might lead in terms of some of the conversations we're having and which which kind of categories suitable sponsors will come from but firstly it will have to sit the sponsor will have to sit in line with our principles and secondly they will have to work alongside of the existing sponsors for each of the individual races so do I see a big brand from within the sport fitting in with those things? Possibly, but it's unlikely. There are some very obvious ones that are immediately going to be ruled out by the very That's nature you. of things. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I think it's fair to say we won't be approaching or having a conversation with, with Dashi or Daisy. I don't even know how you say it. But yeah. So yes, in time, I think you'll see a sponsor. It may be sooner than later, but it will sit within the values of the organisation. This is the first time that Centurion Running and the flagship event, the South Downs Way 100, have been involved in any race series. Why did James feel that this was the right fit and why now? Good question. So since we began, I always saw the South Downs Way as the jewel in the crown. Like it was our pinnacle race. It was the one that I put the most into. I think it... This I don't want to marginalise our other events, but for me, it's our it's our dream course. It's point to point. The South Downs Way is such an iconic place. The views are incredible. There's enough climb and descent to make it exciting um, and challenging without it being, you know, overly difficult. Um, the track finish, you know, for me, going to Western States in 2011, I got to experience that track finish and I thought this is how I want to finish our events, hence the reason the North Downs Way also ended up that way. So I'm pleased it's sort of viewed as the kind of runnable, dare I say it, king sort of a queen 100 mile race in the UK. Obviously now with winter events like the Arc, Lakeland has continued to grow and puts on a stunning show, but they're very different types of events with very different challenges, navigation, being in winter, very harsh conditions. So I, I do think the South Downs Way stands out. I have always tried to grow Centurion very organically. So for me, it's always been about sustainable growth, both in terms of the business and not taking risks on, but also making sure every runner always came away feeling like they were well looked after and that they were a, a name, not a number. And giving control away of that and, and sharing control of what we do has not come easily to me. So we've had plenty of conversations in the past about being involved in wider reaching series or organisations or affiliations. And I've always been a bit resistant because I've been quite happy just to sustain it as we are and just you know keep the, the thing ticking over. Again, yes, this is commercial for us, but it's far more than that. It's about putting the community at the heart of it. And I didn't want to damage that we're now 13 years old the market has completely changed in the uk when we started uh, there were no other marked trail hundreds in the uk period none i suspect now that there are probably more than one a week how do we lift south downs way to become or to maintain ideally its status as the sort of destination the best organized the the most incredible sort of 100 mile trail experience in the UK we need to be part of something bigger we need to lift our expectations and the logistics and the the media and the coverage of the event to give people this all round this next level experience the sport has moved on if you look at Western States, UTMB, some of the Aravipa stuff, a lot of the World Trail Majors events already, the coverage of those events is reaching TV proportions. And we are in danger of getting left behind. And I want 
to give runners the opportunity to still be a name, not a number, to still run in a very community driven event, but for that event to get coverage on a bigger level, to be part of something bigger, for those runners to go away feeling like they're part of a big international race, but with the local feel, that's what we're going for now. And that's why we've kind of stepped into this scary, it is a scary thing and put our head above the parapet and gone for this um, kind of agreement, this association. Would I have done it five years ago? No. Would I have done it with any other group of organisers? No. So it's much more about the opportunity arising at the right time with the right group of other organisers for us. So there could now be a huge wave of international runners coming to Sussex who know nothing about Centurion running and nothing about the South Downs way at all. You're spot on. I think initially the influx of international runners might not be that great. I think the series, obviously we're two weeks in, having launched this thing. We saw an initial boost of entries, like straight away, like people literally have bought into the idea, like this is what I want to be part of. Maybe they'd already eyed up the South Downs 100 as interest for next year, but they'd now sort of, that's tipped the balance and, and they're, they're super keen. You've hit the nail on the head and this is so important and it was so hard to communicate alongside everything else in the initial launch, but the way this is sustainable is that we want people to race their local event and then pick one of the other events in the series, not race all nine. So you're only traveling once internationally. Will that change in time? Will there be other more local or certainly nearer options? Will the series grow? Will there be more events involved? Undoubtedly, yes. So this is an initial sort of starting group of events. And we'll now speak to the myriad of other organisers who've already approached us, obviously, and decide the best path forward with each of those. So there'll be more options going forward, which don't involve such long haul trips necessarily, if that's not something you want to do. The South Downs Way 100 is a point-to-point, -point, 100 mile trail race from Winchester in the west to Eastbourne in the east and takes in pretty much the entire South Downs Way National Trail. South Downs Way became a national park about six, seven years ago and is sort of held up in the southeast as this kind of magical area. It's, it's kind of a ridge, almost like a wave. When you approach it from both the north and the south, you, it appears almost like a wave on the horizon. So it's this sort of chalkland ridge that runs across the south of the country and is just stunningly beautiful because everything around it is so flat. Unfortunately, we don't have any mountains where we are, but this is the next best thing. And what it does is it provides this really runnable, but uh, rolling in a kind of, don't get me wrong, some of some of the climbs are legitimate hills, but they're over pretty quickly and the descents are often pretty forgiving the other side. From a pure running point of view, it's fast. You know, 14 hours for a trail 100 anywhere is quick and that's our course record, uh, which Mark has already been in touch to say he'd love to see challenge, but he's not very happy with us for chucking some international runners into it. <laughs> um, so, <clears throat> super. you know, June in the UK as well, you've got four or five hours of darkness. So, you know for the front runners they're finishing and uh, without needing a headlamp it's super fast racing it lends itself to having crews and paces which have been fundamental to our events so runners can be well supported uh, it's a marked trail there's 14 checkpoints so you can come from anywhere and race on an even footing and just run this beautiful challenging but not overly difficult 100 mile trail race point to point trail race is it a slight spin off of the Western States template? Yes. You know, I was going to the States to do these races, Western States, I got a chance to run in 2011, absolutely captivated me. And I wanted to bring some of those things back to the UK scene. And that's what essentially it was in the early days. Um, so that's, that's what the event is. Um, 120 volunteers looking after four to 500 runners. Will that be more this year? We'll see, but we won't grow it too much. Are you going to make it 100 miles or are you just going to keep it at 99 and a half? Do you know, the option, so I think it's I think it's fairly well known that the course is, as you say, probably closer to 99 miles. And I know that does cause issues. Obviously, we start within Matterley Bowl, Matterley Estate, which is this beautiful private estate. And our relationship with the landlord there is such that he basically says to us, do whatever you want. So we can definitely stretch it by a mile. Perhaps we ought to. Just I don't want to see any more watches with a 99 on. I'd far rather see that, mind you, than 105 where they've got lost. So, yeah. By the way, if you're finding this video useful or interesting or entertaining, 
please do consider subscribing to the channel. We're trying to grow. We're a small channel. We're getting bigger. Your support is absolutely vital. Thank you very much for that. Now, there are, of course, a number of runners who come and run the South Downs Way 100 every year. So how is the race going to change for those runners? That's a really good question. So I think we can talk about what's going to be different for 2024 now and then what's going to be different for 2025 and beyond is the second phase really. So 2024, you will see essentially all the same component parts that we've always had there. So there'll be no fundamental change to the infrastructure. We're not about to allow a thousand extra runners in and completely change the look of the event. If we get substantial uplift in interest, which would be great, by the way, um, we will allow 100 extra starters, possibly 150 at a stretch, on top of the normal starting field. We've had wave starts there in the past, so that won't come as a shock. Um, but essentially, you'll be looked after exactly the same way as you always have been. With the benefits of, we will increase the coverage of the event, so the media side, tremendously. We will invest heavily in getting multiple photographers out, um, and sharing that media live uh, as the event uh, you know goes ahead there'll be live streaming from various checkpoints the finish line out on course there'll be much more coverage on the video side of things so what's the direct value to a runner there as the events happening not nothing to them in the in the moment but afterwards so much more to reflect back on and for friends and family at home to be able to follow the race in a different way to they've ever been able to follow anything we do before. Don't get me wrong, open tracking is great and following dots is fun, but we can do so much more than that. So that's gonna be the investment from us. You'll see an expanded start village. So there'll be other things available at the start you've never had access to. Obviously we've always had the kids races, we've had sponsors there before and food and drink offerings, but we will expand that out. Um, and then there'll be so there's a tranche of like secondary information coming with World Trail Majors where we will start to share what the series means for every runner, not the scoring system necessarily for the elites and prize money. Those, those are things that are coming too. But what will it mean for everyone else in the race? The travel side of things, I hope we have addressed a little, but we'll continue to address in that there'll be, we only want you to compete your local race and one other. Plus there'll be more race options in the future. The other thing was, what does this mean for me as a runner? Like, what's the scoring system? What do I get for completing or competing in the series? Those things will be announced in the second tranche of information, as will the prize money side of things. So there will be prize money for the series and quite possibly prize money for each of the individual events in the series. Those things, we, we have a template, we have it all ready, we're agreed, but until we want to release the second tranche of information and it wasn't suitable to release all of that at the same time. We will control that narrative and we will launch that next. So I think within the next month or so, those questions will be answered in far more detail. The South Downs Way 100 has been running for some 12 years, yet in that time, there hasn't been an appearance by a truly world-class athlete. Tom Evans did run and win the 50 mile race, the South Downs Way 50 a few years ago, but he's never run the 100. I asked James, what would attract an elite athlete to come and run in the Sussex countryside? I would say today, you're absolutely spot on. We haven't had a truly international field at South Downs Way 100. We just haven't. And, and we barely have had one in the UK period. There's been the World Trail uh, Championships in Wales 2015, I think it was, which Ricky won. We've had um, obviously world class fields at things like our Track 100, uh, where we've literally had world records going. Um, We've had world-class athletes occasionally pop up at something like West Highland Way 10 years ago, West Highland Way race. It was one of the few really iconic 100 milers and Scotland as a destination, super appealing. We just don't get it here. We just, in the UK period, I think UTS changed that a little bit with the in, income of UTMB and the stone system and the index system and the prizes on offer to elite athletes as being part of the UTMB World Series, more so as a result of the contracts they have with their individual sponsors than UTMB prize money itself. We have we did see some in properly, you know, high level international competition this year and last. So do I want to see it at South Downs Way 100? I'm absolutely desperate to see it. Remember, South Downs Way 
80, which this course is essentially 20 miles plus the 80, was the World Trail Running Championships. That was what it was. So back in the day, the fields were four or 500 deep. You were getting all of the top international runners coming to compete to win this thing. And I think the history of that is not really not that old, but has been completely forgotten from 25 years ago. So we already have that heritage and now it's about trying to get some of athletes back to compete against the best of British because we've had, you know, Mark's 14.03 or, um, you know, Beth Ann's 16.40. These are incredible performances. If they're pushed by international competition or we have truly international calibre runners coming over and competing, I mean, those times will go down and down and down. You know, it could be so exciting to watch. I don't really think, unless it's at UTS, the British runners have had an opportunity to compete against international competition on home soil. That's really what I'd love to see. Is it all about the elite athletes? Absolutely not. Is it an important part of this for us? Yes, it is. Yeah. It's obviously not gone unnoticed by the ultra running community that this announcement of the World Trail Major Series comes off the back of a very turbulent few weeks in the sport, given the recent Whistler controversy. If you've not seen my video with the Ironman group about that, then click the link up above there uh, to watch that. But given that, and given that now some people have been calling for a boycott of the UTMB races, and given that there's already a number of different race series in the calendar, is there a gap in the market that the World Trail Majors series is trying to fill? The timing of the Worcester Alpine Meadows, uh, Black Coombe Vale Resorts, Ironman UTMB announcements, conversations, social media back and forth was completely um, separate to any kind of ongoing conversations that were being had by our association. Needless to say, the conversations on World Trail Majors have been going on many, many months, if not actually years after UTWT ended. The fact that this all came out publicly with regards to Wham and Gary a couple of weeks ago was absolute coincidence of timing. Is it relevant to what we've done or said since? Absolutely. But Bourne had no impact whatsoever. It hasn't changed anything for us. Um, I think people are putting two and two together and saying, well, you know, World Trail Majors were announced off the back of this almost, this conversation, and at a time when UTMB Ironman are somewhat in the public dock for actions they may or may not have taken against Gary and, and, uh, and Coastal Mountain Trails. Um, that's fine as a narrative. Is it something we're looking to promote and, um, you know, benefit from? Abs absolutely not. We simply want events to have their independence, to have their authenticity, and for the training communities in the areas around these events to be upheld and protected. And the direction of travel with UTMB Ironman is, is growth. That's what Ironman are about, and that's fine. Do they put on an incredible event? Yes, they do. Have I run UTMB? Yes. Would I ever run a UTMB event again in the future? TBC, but I certainly wouldn't rule it out. And it's certainly still the ultimate goal for a lot of runners out there. And we're not by any stretch telling people to change tack. Come and do our series, not UTMB Ironman. That's not what this is. There is another way, though, that is to the UTMB Ironman model. And that is what we're offering people. You know, it's not a template. Every race maintains their own set of values, their own community has say in how they operate and can move dynamically within that. And therefore, there is huge value to that. And the trail run community, the values that they hold at their core, are the values that we're trying to impress upon them that we are upholding as well. And, and it will provide a viable alternative to that. You're absolutely right to bring up the fact that there's Golden Trail World Tour Series, there's there was the UTWT, there's World Marathon Running Associate, World Mountain Running Association, the World Marathon Majors, Spartan. This is different to all of those things. Um, it's a different group of events and events that have come together that there hasn't been a group of events that have held their own place the way we all hold ours within our individual communities. And I think in time, the values of that will come through and shine through and the value to the runners and taking part in those events will only increase 
and brutally honestly the number of events involved in this will increase too providing like a it is it's going to be a process we, we're not launching this nine set of events and saying come and do this this is the be all and end all this is everything you've seen it all this is phase one of 50 on the journey it's the first step but remembering also that this is like i said at the start a beta of utwt there is an existing foundation and relationship between us as organizers that we're growing off of this isn't started from scratch in a heartbeat so is this race series an attempt somehow to redress the balance given the direction of travel that trail and ultra running has been taking in the past few years yeah look i mean this is a response to where trail running has gone is going we as organizers have literally said we don't want to be part of something we don't want to be owned and governed and managed by something that's bigger than us we want to be we want to remain independent we want to be in control of our own destiny and we want to hold the community at the center of that and that is going to be possible within a series for the first time we're able to do both things if we had become part of something else and you know people will put two and two together and say well all of these events possibly had had conversations about becoming part of something else along the way if we'd done that we would have lost autonomy over our own events there's the whole reason each one of us does what we do is because we love the sport and this isn't i mean it's cliche again but it's not just a job we we, we fundamentally believe in trail running and the value of that community and being in charge of our own destinies and that's that's something we've consciously decided to 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 uphold and, and move away from the direction of travel, general direction of travel, yeah. So here we have a race series which is setting out to provide perhaps a different path for ultra runners, some of whom have made it very clear that they are not happy and uncomfortable with where the sport is currently headed. And these races are not only wanting to attract runners like you and me, but the top level elite runners. So what interest has James had in the South Downs Way 100 from the top echelon of our sport? That is a really good question. And I th the answer is there is interest from elite athletes. And you've probably already seen it in, on social media that many of the more vocal or the ones that have a bigger social media profile and tend to put themselves out there a bit more, have even prior to this announcement coming out been questioning where they want to go, the direction of their running and racing in 24, 25. Has this put another option on the table for them? Yes, it has. I think the fundamental thing for elite level runners is understanding what the scoring system and then picking the events that suit them, both in terms of maybe where they want to run or what they're excited in, but opportunities to race to the best of their abilities. Uh, Ultra Mount Fuji or Mount Fuji 100 as it's now known is a very different proposition to Black Canyon's 100k. One is directly suited to a certain type of runner, another to another. So I think elite athletes are waiting to see what comes next. The interest is there. For us, the importance is also working with their sponsors and the key brands in the sport to help them put place value on competing in the world trail majors because we all know that if you're a sponsored contracted international athlete trail runner you are given incentives for competing in and doing well in the marquee events that doesn't include world trail majors at the moment maybe it includes some of them they might be written in independently individually but generally it'll it'll state western states or utmb or hard rock whatever it might be and Placing importance on this series and it is about us working with the sponsors and the athletes to say, this is valuable, come and run here. This will provide the exposure that you were going to get somewhere else, but in a different way and in a more authentic way. And then the value is there and then they're more likely to come. So do I see that we're going to get, you know, a dozen male and female top tier runners coming out of UTMB to compete in the South Wales 100? Of course not. Do I want to see the competition gradually going in the right direction and certainly a handful of very exciting male and female athletes really pushing course records and racing each other and pushing the best of British? That, that's what I'm after initially, really. Even if we could attract a few in, in the first year or so, because some of the events, Trans Grand Canary and what the like, they're going to have that level of competition anyway. Yeah, anyway. 
Yeah. So for us, the sort of lower end of the spectrum in terms of field size and elite athlete pedigree, that would be interesting to see whether we're seen as a good opportunity to pick up a win, easy point, because you're still going to end up winning a world trail major event. That's a big deal. That should mean a lot. That's what we want really is, is some of the elite runners to buy in. And, and obviously we have good relationships with a lot of them anyway. Um, so it's about just branching the conversation out and moving forward really. Look, let's be blunt about it. The South Downs Way 100 course is absolutely perfect for Jim Wormsley's style of running. It's fast, it's a runnable course. Could we see Jim Wormsley at the South Downs Way 100 one day? Does it lend itself to a type of runner like Jim? Hell yes, like obviously. Is it also the biggest match for Jim to burn or an athlete like Jim? No, it's not. Because you're looking at sub 13 hour potential finish times is a very different thing to, you know, gruelling your way around UTMB in 20 hours. It's a different type of race and it, you know, there's a whole different set of variables that flow down from that. Is it compatible with the seasons they've already undoubtedly kind of outlined and planned for in 2024? I doubt it. Do we, do we see anyone sort of main, main, big, big hitter pulling out of, you know, UTMB and running South Downs 100 in 2024? I don't see it. They might, they might. Some of them are, uh, you know, master their own destiny enough. They, they care enough about the values that we are upholding that they might just go, you know what? I'm going to throw my eggs in this basket. I'm going to be there in the first year. It's the inaugural set of races. I'm going to go for this thing. There is prize money. If they can convince their sponsor that there is value in being there at the outset of this really valuable, like independent series, anything's possible. Um, I think there'll be a second tier of runners that we probably attract initially. And then we might see the flow move away from one to the other. But as I've said already, it depends so much about what the sponsors want and how much say the athlete have in the races that are written into their contracts because they're trying to earn a living here, right? Is it is Jim going to get everything he wants out of the sport and be able to earn a living by doing South Downs 100 versus UTMB? I mean, they're just completely different things. Yeah, but would I love to see him? Oh, man, would I love, man, would I love to see him. Now, it strikes me that in terms of female elite athletes, the South Downs Way 100 course wouldn't really suit Courtney DeWalter's style of running, the kind of running that she likes to do. So is there a female elite athlete who James feels would be a good fit for the South Downs Way 100? Camille. <laughs> I think a lot of the US, the, 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 the synergy between the US scene and the UK scene is much greater regards South Downs 100 than the, the European scene, you know, where it's all mountain based. you got to run, even Western States, Western States has only marginally more climb than South Downs 100. Leadville has the same amount of climb as, as South Downs 100. Yes, it's at altitude, but essentially there's still runners courses and Black Canyons is the same, Havelina, anything on the East Coast. They're not big mountainous races, they are trail races, and that's what South Downs Way is. Whereas, you know, for Courtney, who she don't get me wrong, she can do Courtney can do anything. Is she better placed and does she enjoy being in the mountains more so she does Mount Fuji hundred? Mm. There yeah. I mean that's that makes much more sense for her. So if you are interested in running the South Downs Way 100 next year or in future years as part of the World Trail Majors series, where do you go? What do you do? So entries are open now, www.centurionrunner.com. Scroll down the event list, you'll find South Downs Way 100. Front and centre of the homepage at the moment is the World Trail Majors thing. So I think we're at about 420, 30 entries or so. So there's places available um as i say we opened last week with world trial majors and yeah 10 percent of the entries went in a day so i think the movement is gonna go and we're not just simply gonna let everyone just keep piling in i have allowed a certain sort of cap 
there's definitely a couple of hundred entries still there. So if you're interested, check it out. There's there's a pre-qualifying standard. You've got to have finished a 50 mile race in the last four years within 15 hours or equivalent. If it's a more mountainous race, you can email us and we'll we'll tell you whether we accept the qualifier. But as simple as that. That's all you got to do. If you found this interview with James interesting, entertaining, useful, then please do consider subscribing to the channel. If you would like to watch my wife, Victoria, and I running the South Downs Way 100, then we'll see you over here very shortly. Uh, thank you so much to James Elson for taking us through the ins and outs of the World Trail Majors series. And there will be more information about that series coming very soon. Uh, in the meantime, Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you on the start line next time. Bye bye.